Hey, this guy's also known as Skylar Loves Cody Movie. Back again for another video. Now, this is a different video in its entirety. It's another one which I've written down. Um, basically, James DVD Collector 1974 and Fulker Ball has done one of these. And Frankie FK vlogs, and I know Ali's. I think Ali's done one, but I'm not 100 percent certain. I like a couple of others, and it's what I've watched. Basically, you may see one of these from me once a fortnight or once a month, and I have watched in just over two weeks, 29 films and wrestling DVDs. Or oh, 29 movies and wrestling DVDs. <laughs> so, the first two, I won't get into detail on most of them. Because most of them, you know, what it's about. Um, and definitely the first two. Because the first two I've already done reviews on, so I don't have to speak much about it, so... Here we go, the first one's Aftermath from 1994. Check out my review from that. Second one is second one is Singapore Sling from 1990 in black and white. Check out my review for that. Third one is Fright Night, the original. Um basically it stars Chris Sarandon and Amanda Bears and basically it's like boys into like vampire films and that. Suspect, suspect, uh, suspects the, the new next door neighbour of being a vampire. And lo and behold, the new next door neighbour, he is a vampire. And just basically saying that it is a good movie. And. I haven't seen it in a long time, so that's that's flight name for you. <laughs> I'm losing what I'm going to say. Um, number four is Disney's Robin Hood. I watched that with Tori. It was last week. Last week. Um, really good movie. If you don't know, like the the story of Robin Hood, basically Robin Hood is. He likes to rob from the rich and give to the poor and the sheriff from Nottingham comes around, takes up everybody's money who eat, who had even poor and Robin basically tries and gets it back for the more with subsidies for like for example there was a child birthday and, and he got a farthing and the tax man took that off him. So Robin overheard what happened and he gave the little boy a little outfit to look like Robin Hood, which made him happy. It, it is honestly, it's one of the Disney movies I've never seen and after seeing it, I do enjoy it. Next one is Darkman from 1990, I think. Don't quote me on that. It stars Liam Neeson, and um, basically he's um he's experimenting on like for human stuff to like recreate faces and stuff like that, and this gang comes in, basically destroys the lab, kills his lab partner, and they thought they killed him. But what actually happened, um, Liam, Neeson, Liam Neeson's face got disfigured that much and he then became Darkman and he has like an anger, pro pro uh, an anger problem and starts fighting back against this gang and recreating what they look like and he dresses up like them, takes the money, stuff like that. Honestly, that is really good. Highly recommended. Next one, we're on to number six, is Aerobicide from 1987. Basically, 
it's an 80s slasher set in a gym, gymnasium. It is really, really good. You think you know who the killer is, but then you don't find out till right at the end. And it's one of them good twists in a slasher. So, it's really highly recommended. Um, number seven, basically, number seven is one of the wrestling ones. Um, it was a documentary done in 1991 of Ric Flair from when he... Um, when he was unemployed, he got fired from in, well, WCW at the time, NWA, and they asked him to retain the belt or give us twenty five thousand pounds for the um for the belt if he won't give us it back, and basically the documentary was. From when he left WCW and he come into WWE as it is now, basically matches the unseen matches that he had with Hogan. Now I didn't know this right. WWE have documented on one of their videos saying that Undertaker was undefeated up till Survivor Series. Now. That isn't the case because Hulk Hogan and Undertaker had a match on Primetime Wrestling back in 1991 and Ric Flair tried to interfere in it and Hogan retained the title, retained his title and this was three days before Survivor Series had happened. So WWE somehow said on the Survivor Series pay-per-view the Undertaker's defeated, like, undefeated, and he's still undefeated, and it wasn't to be the case. But anyway, aside from that, the documentary was scaling around Ric Flair. He was carrying this world heavyweight title and saying that Hogan had ducked him for the past 10 years and stuff like that. I mean, it was an, it was an hour and 56 minutes, the documentary. It was good. And it's worth a watch. And then you see him at the end get him get the title at Royal Rumble ninety two. So if you can find it on YouTube or if you can find it on DVD, I highly recommend you watch it because it is really entertaining and it basically discloses matches and things that WWE have not said before. So that's number seven. Number eight is Bonnie and Clyde from 1967 starring Faye Dunaway and Warren Beatty. I don't want to get into it because you know the, the story about Bonnie and Clyde being the bank robbers and and they end up getting caught in the end. It, it's one of the best versions I've ever seen of Bonnie and Clyde. So that's highly recommended. Um, number nine is Dick Tracy from 1989, I think. Also starring Warren Beatty and Madonna. And the little kid in it is Jack from Hook. So that's a little bit of trivia. Um, Dick Tracy's like a private investigator, and he's, it's it's the same. It's like the it's like the coppers, like the private investigators. They're investigating the mob. They're uncovering what the, what the mob's doing, and in the end, they take them down. That's sort of what Dick Tracy's about. Um, number ten. Don't have to go into this because everybody's watched it. I love this film. This what probably be in my top. At the top 20 list, this would be in my top 20 list, no doubt. Probably be in my top 10, and it is, of course, Beetlejuice. Don't have to go into it. The next one I will talk a bit more about because I love the first one. But you want to see the second one? I was highly surprised, and it was better. A bit better than the first one, and it is, of course, Nice as the Demons 2 from 1994. 
actually watched it on Netflix. Yay, I'm finally, finally get into the Netflix spin. I know people are going to hate me for it, but I finally got into the Netflix spin. And this was the first film I watched. It was really, really good. Basically, what happens is, you know the story of Angela. She's like Satan's daughter. So she's, she ends up being a demon. And she comes back and she's after her sister. It basically rolls Mouse, the sister's name is, and... Basically, Angela attacks her friends and makes them become demons. And all I will say to you is the ending is superb. I love the ending. That's why they created the third one that I can't wait to see. So I want to see what the third one's like. But the second one is really good. Just watch the ending. So there you go. Um, number 12 is A Second Chance from 2011. It's an Australian drama. Um, basically, um, it's about a 12-year-old girl. She gets picked on in school. And what happens, basically, is gymnastics is her only way out. Like, from the bullying. Um. What happens is she improves that much, she gets like she gets some medals and this national division she gets um the gold medal and she's facing a, the bully the rival and not only does she conquer the bully she in the end settles the differences with with the bully. And they, here and the bully end up going to the nationals, the junior Olympics, whatever they call it, or the junior world championships, and they do really well. And that was the ending of the film. But it was really good. How do you set it up in that? So that's a second chance. Number 13 is the top 25 rivalries in wrestling history from last year. I was absolutely shocked because I always thought that before watching this, like I've seen it and I was like going, well, when, I, when will I get a chance to watch it? And I always thought it was between Brett and Sean and Hogan and Andre for the number one spot. And I was pleasantly surprised that it was Austin and McMahon. That had the, I know I'm spoiling it a bit for you, but... I've only finished watching it today and I was like highly surprised of what rivalries were on it and it was really, really underrated in my opinion. It was, some of them were a shock to me that I was like, why are these on it and they shouldn't be. I was like, what about these two? I <laughs> That was what was going on in my head. So, But anyway, it was a really good documentary you haven't seen it highly recommend it go and get it next one is the twisted disturbing life of kane wow i have been wanting this wanting a dvd for about oh going on to about six years this dvd and didn't get it till a couple of weeks ago finally put it in watched it and I like the fact that it was Kane doing it was that was his documentary that was his that belonged to him. It wasn't anybody else's. It wasn't like Michael Cole or Matt Stryker or Renee Young hosting it. It was his and his alone and his way of telling it. That's what I liked about it. It was his way of telling his career so far. And there's more that's yet to come, but it was one of the best documentaries, wrestling documentaries I've ever seen in my life. Next is Survivor Series 91 and 92. Um, 
which is 15 and 16. It's because they're in a two pack. Um, I've spoke a bit about Undertaker and Hogan's rivalry on Ric Flair's documentary. Um, basically, it's just a series of matches that happened in in the Survivor Series event 91 and Survivor Series 92. My favourite one of Survivor Series 91 was, of course, Taker and Hogan. And my favourite one of 92 was... The tag team of Mr. Perfect, Macho Man, versus Ric Flair and Razor Ramon. It, there was a bit of a twist and he thought um, Perfect was going to walk away and he decided, nah, I'm going to come back. So that was good. Next one was SummerSlam 92 and 93. SummerSlam 92 will always have a place in my heart because it was set in Wembley Stadium. I was there. Absolutely loved it. I I have there's loads of matches on there that I liked, but one of my favourites was the Shawn Michaels model Rick Martel match, where they accidentally hit each other in the face and Sherry passed out and oh it was hilarious. Um, and also another match that comes out from that is the Bret Hart Bulldog match for the Intercontinental Title, which was just stunning. And of course, SummerSlam '93. The match that comes out for me is one of them was the Bret Hart match. He was meant to face Jerry the King Lawler, and he ended up facing Doink. He beat a Doink. Something happened, and Jerry the King Lawler come in, smashed the clutch over Hitman's head, prompting them two to have a match, and then. Brett put the sharpshooter on Jerry the King Lawler and he wouldn't release the hold so it he had to reverse the decision. And then, of course, there was the Lex Luger Yokozuna match where Lex Luger knocked Yokozuna out with his metal-plated elbow and he went outside the ring for the count-out. And he won by count out, so that's a little bit insight to them too. The next one is from 18, 18, 18 to 21, and they're the first four WrestleManias. WrestleMania 1, you know the, the story, the Hogan, Mr. T versus Piper and Mr. Wonderful tag team match. So that springs into mind. WrestleMania 2... Hogan, King Kong, Bundy match and the British Bulldogs claiming their first ever tag team titles that springs to mind and the fabulous Mueller winning Velvet McIntyre in less than I think it was like a couple of minutes it was really quick of course, I've got to go on to WrestleMania 3. There's a lot of things that happened. Piper put on Adrian Adonis's hair. Um, Brutus turning and baby face from a heel. Savage and, Savage and Steamboat epic intercontinental title match. And of course, the slam heard it round the world. Hogan slamming Andre. There's other great matches on, on these DVDs, but I'm just picking out a certain couple. And of course, WrestleMania 4 is the famous tournament which crowned Savage as the champion. And what else? That's what stands out on them. Next is WrestleFest 88 and WrestleFest 90. Um, these were just a series of matches from 1988 when Savage was the champion and WrestleFest 90 when Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior were champion. There was like a series of matches. There was good tag team matches with... Oh, I can't remember now. 
I only washed it yesterday and I've forgotten about it. There was the half foundation in it. Um, the Rougeau's. The British Bulldogs. Demolition. There was quite a couple. Of, there was a couple with demolition in it that were quite good. So, there's another two for you out the way. The next is Moth Diaries from 2011. Basically, there's a, a girl in it called Anessa, and she's not all what she seems, and there's a few killings during the film that are kind of crazy. So, one of the girls ends up investigating and finds out that she's a ghost. She's like half a ghost, half something else. Like half human. And I'll just tell you what happens at the end of the film so he doesn't get it away. Basically, the girl has been investigating all this in the school ends up going into the basement and finding Anessa in this trunk asleep and basically burns the trunk with Anessa in it because Anessa wanted her, the girl to be killed from a past, like tried to relive a past and in the end the police end up wanting her for question and stuff like that. It's got a good twist to it. It's not your typical movie. Not It's like a class it as a thriller because it's not your typical thriller. It's got a quite... One of them is a quite unusual death in it. So it's worth the watch, basically. <laughs> Only a couple more to go now. Um, next one is U.S. Rampage 91. And another wrestling one. It was really good. One of my favourite ones where they've done Paul Bader and they've put him inside this funeral home and he goes... Oh, I like a bloody Mary. Oh, no, I, I might have a bloody Tom or a bloody Jane. And it was just... I loved the way that they'd done that twist instead of them down. Putting them on the mic and going, Oh, this is my little parlour. And Undertaker comes out from the coffin and stuff like that. Um, I'm just thinking, what else? Yeah. Um, mean Jean. Mean Jean's just totally funny, isn't it? <laughs> Runs after Bobby the Brain Heenan right at the end of it. But the matches are superb. Um, and then US Rampage 92 that I've just finished. Um, basically, it was like trivias between certain wrestlers and I got them all right. And it's other than this, it's not just trivias, it's matches there as well. One of the best matches on it was Taker and Warrior versus. Berserker and Papa Shango. That was a good one. Um, oh yeah, and Brett and Sean. Which started... Which st escalated the proper... Started the rivalry between them. Two. And other great matches. And... I'm nearly finished. <laughs> thank God, Thank goodness. Um, the last one is, of course, one thing directed by... Wes Craven and starred David Hess. You know the story, I don't have to get into it. it. It's one of the classic 80s films that you should go and watch. So I'm not giving anything away because it's just good. So, basically, that is what I've watched during the past just over two weeks. I think it's a total of 27 films. 27 films and wrestling documentaries. I will probably do this once a fortnight or 
once every three weeks. <laughs> oh, me throat's going all groggy. And basically, please stay gory and have unpleasant dreams. And before I say tata for now, if anybody else wants to do one of these one I've watched videos, go ahead. And I can't wait to see what James and Ian come up with next. And whoever else is doing this, so ta-ta for now.